everyone! Welcome to the Morbid Monologue. This week I'd like to talk about something I really love. Photography. Specifically, a type that I find really fascinating. Post-mortem photography and the myths versus facts surrounding it. And just to be extra clear before we get started, we're talking about the practice of photographing the dead. So if you do not wish to see images of deceased people, you may want to avoid this video. We'll begin by answering the obvious question first. Is post-mortem photography real? The short answer is yes, absolutely. But it's probably not what you think. This type of photography became common alongside standard portraits in the mid to late 1800s, during the Victorian era. It's also known as memento mori, which is Latin for remember you must die. To some, this seems quite morbid, but it was really normal to the Victorians. Back then, death was handled differently. If you remember in my first episode on Marianne Cotton, people and children died from illness all the time. And when people died, they weren't in a hospital bed and then whisked away by the coroner immediately. They were at home, and their body would remain there for sometimes days while they were prepared for a funeral or wake that would also take place in the home. So people were used to being around the recently deceased. And that would be the last chance for the family or loved ones to have a portrait taken of them. Contrary to popular belief, it wasn't that people didn't have pictures taken sooner due to the cost, because by the mid to late 1800s, portraits were actually pretty inexpensive at just 25 cents, which would be about $8.35 today. People just didn't have their portraits taken as often back then as they do now, and in some cases, like when an infant has died, they simply didn't get a chance to have one taken before dying. When a person died, the photographer would typically go to the home right away to create the portrait. Their goal was to create an image that looked as though the person was simply asleep. The body would be placed near a window to provide soft natural light and would be lying on a bed or in a coffin peacefully. Sometimes mothers would hold and cradle their deceased babies, and other times the family would gather around the coffin. And from what I've seen, the images were created respectfully and in good taste. But what about the countless post-mortem photos online showing people standing, eyes wide open, and playing with toys? Well, I hate to break it to you, but those are not post-mortem images. With the ease of sharing images across the internet, Misinformation is spreading like wildfire. Sites like Pinterest, Buzzfeed, and even the BBC are guilty of perpetuating the inaccurate labeling of post-mortem on Victorian images. One of the most common ways people use to identify a post-mortem photo is to look for any metal stands within the image. These were posing stands. Many people believe this is how photographers would pose the dead to be standing or sitting upright. But the reality is, that is absolutely false. The stands were only used on the living to help keep them still for clearer images, since the exposure times back then could be up to a minute long. These flimsy metal stands would not be able to hold the dead weight of a body. And if they could, the body would look really awkward with parts of it being stiff and others floppy, and it would just be a mess. Unless rigor mortis had set in, in which case, good luck dressing or posing them at all anyway. Not to mention, historians haven't found any documentation from photographers stating the use of these stands for the dead. Instead, photographers only referenced them as being used for the living. How about the eyes? In those photos, you can tell who's dead because their eyes are hazy. Well, their eyes are sometimes hazy because again, with long exposure times, people would sometimes blink a few times while the picture is being taken. And that goes along with why people tended to not smile. Smiling for a photo just wasn't a standard yet. And it's honestly easier to just sit there and look at the camera for a minute than to have a cute pose and smile for a minute straight. Which brings me to babies. <sighs> Most of the so-called post-mortem photos I've seen floating around the internet involve babies. Basically, any time a baby is asleep in a Victorian photo, someone is gonna try and pass the photo off as post-mortem. But let's think logically about this for a second. 
babies are hard to photograph. I was a newborn slash baby photographer for several years, and from that experience I can tell you, it is not easy to get a baby or small child to sit still and look presentable for a long enough time to snap a photo. I cannot imagine having to do it with a minute long exposure time, or even a 10 second exposure time. By far the best case scenario for baby photography is when the baby is sleeping. And that's exactly what Victorian photographers aimed for. In fact, in some cases, they actually gave babies a sedative to ensure they were asleep for the photograph. But when they were photographed awake, they often used a posing stand to help keep them still. And when they didn't have a posing stand to use, sometimes they would just sub one in by using the mother. That's where you start to see the category of postmortem photos called ghost moms, which is just the mother holding her child while covered with a blanket or a backdrop. But people insist that the child must be dead because the mother's covered up. And that's just not the case. It's really as simple as the child needed to be held for the photo either because they didn't have a stand or the baby was too fussy and the mother just didn't want to be photographed. I've also taken photos like that of babies, particularly newborns, that are used to the mother's heartbeat and need to be on their chest or they scream and cry the whole time. And how many times has your mom wanted a photo of just the kids and had zero desire to be in it herself? It's not that weird. With all these different mislabeled postmortem Victorian images circulating the internet, there's one other problem that's tied into this mess. And that's that some of these images aren't even Victorian. Modern images are being presented as Victorian postmortem photos, either on purpose or by accident. At least I hope that some of them are by accident because there are a lot out there that are obviously modern photos that I'm assuming were just created as art or as a tribute to Victorian images. But in any case, they have added fuel to the fire and provided another way people can turn death into profit. Because owning antique postmortem photos is really in right now. Which I'm kind of on the fence about, but that's a moral topic for another day. The problem is that sites like eBay and Etsy are using all of these talking points as proof that the images they're selling are postmortem. When in reality, they're just grabbing any old Victorian photo, slapping a postmortem label on it, and making money. And making money off postmortem photos doesn't stop with Victorian images. While looking at various websites to write this episode, I stumbled onto galleries of cell phone images people have snapped of deceased celebrities, which I'm assuming were then sold. So, that's fun. But anyway, despite post-mortem portraits seeming like an outdated practice of the 1800s, they're actually still a thing today. One of the most common examples of modern post-mortem imagery comes from stillborn infants, meaning babies that were born deceased. In these cases, the mothers have carried their baby in their bellies for as long as the whole nine months and have a connection with them. So it's a tragic and devastating event to go through and presents the only option for a portrait of their baby to be post-mortem. I personally know people that have had this happen and have those post-mortem photos. And although I've never experienced that situation myself and could never fully understand, I can certainly appreciate why they would want those photos. And it isn't just for infants. There are photos being taken of all ages of deceased people these days, ranging from professional to amateur to cell phone selfies. And I think that's a lovely thing, personally, as long as whoever is deceased would have been okay with it. These images can be done in a respectful way, and when they are, I think they can help provide some level of closure to the dead's loved ones. To me, death is the most permanent thing in the world, and if you have the ability to capture one last photo of a person you love, even if it's while they're dead before never seeing them again, I think you should. And I'm not talking about the thumbs up, tongue out, hashtag YOLO selfies. Those are gross. But what do you guys think? Do you think postmortem photos are acceptable or disrespectful? Or just outright creepy? Honestly, I would consider being a postmortem photographer. I think that would be a really rewarding job. 
My only hesitation is I'm really awkward around the bereaved. I hope that doesn't sound insensitive. I'm just awkward. <laughs> Anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments, and if there's a morbid topic you'd like to hear about next, tell me about that too. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. So I already had this outfit and a cardboard box that I figured, you know, I, I bet I could make that into a coffin. So I decided, why don't I do my own Victorian post-mortem photos, because why not?